When they're not climbing trees, they're making videos about trees. When they're not making videos about trees, they're competing in trees. When they're not doing that, they're fiddling with hardware. And when they're not fiddling with their hardware, they're milling wood. And when they're not milling wood, they're pulling wood out of their pants. By wood, I mean sawdust. And when they're not doing any of that, well, they're talking trees. Hello and welcome to the first ever Talking Trees podcast by ClimbingAlbrus.com. The website ClimbingAlbrus.com has been running now for four years and being an avid listener of podcasts on pretty much every car journey and run I go on, I thought starting one about our industry would be pretty awesome and a great way to share more in-depth thoughts on topics we cover in each episode. For each episode, I'll be joined by friends and fellow professionals to chat about all things trees and drink beer because as we know, those two are the things we do best when we are together. So, joining me today for this very special first episode are three funny, good-looking and smart arborists who are great friends of mine and have willingly Ew! agreed to join me on this <laughs> adventure into the unknown of podcasting. They were easily persuaded by the talk there would be beer involved. So, first up, the man himself from our video series, The Matt Fernandez Project. He has now been in the industry for over four years. It's the funny and charming Matt Fernandez. Thanks, thanks for joining us, Matty boy. <laughs> thanks, Dan. Thanks, guys. Um, next up, a good friend of mine, also from the UK, now living here in British Columbia, an arborist of, I think, nine years, but correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, um, one of the most sarcastic and witty men I know, <laughs> George Keyes. How are you, George? Knackered. <laughs> <laughs> long day at the office, mate, is it? As always. Um, and last, but certainly not least, an arborist who is also a professional photographer and now starting to specialise in joining these two skills together to get amazing pictures from the canopy. It is Joel Spooner of joelspooner.com. Thank man. you for joining us, Joel. Thank you. Right. So the first thing I reckon we should talk about, um, seeing as though it's a very current topic, is the talk of tree stuff selling out or selling to Cheryl, should I say. Um, Controversial. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your reactions? Uh, looking at the chat on Facebook and Instagram and all the rest of it, looks like um, Luke's done it for his family, I'm sure. Built the business over I don't know how many years. Um, and uh, it looks like he wants to take a step back from what is probably a pretty hectic lifestyle and give a bit back to his family. Um, from Cheryl's point of view, it seems like they took a bit of a hit from uh, Tree Stuff's popularity, and it's a pretty smart, smart move for them. Yeah, I reckon. big, big, big business move from from Cheryl, obviously, because mm -hmm. they're. I think we could almost certainly say that Tree Stuff was Cheryl's number one competitor. Um, and Tree Stuff seemed to have this huge following. Like, Luke had done an amazing job of, of his business model, I thought. Like, it's kind of something that I hadn't seen before, especially from the art industry. Who he, he seemed to somehow give cut such, like, customer ser like, such good customer service and um, stickers. <laughs> stickers. Stickers. Yeah, stickers. 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 I think that's the key. I think that's the key. Stickers. stickers. Like everybody loves something free, and if it's yeah. even if it's a sticker, like people get excited about the fact that it's free. Um, but also, like tree stuff. Every tree competition I've been to, tree stuff seem to be the one that are, are donating the most prizes yeah. and. Yeah. Like from from big ticket items all the way down to like you say like stickers, there'd just be like thousands of different types of tree stuff stickers. But they're, they're smart because they brand a lot of basic items as well. So they're giving out rope bags. Mm -hmm. Everyone's yeah. putting their brand new ropes in their rope bag and then taking them to the comps. People are putting the stickers on all of their rope bags. So it's they've uh, they've made a brand for themselves and they made a they made a brand for um for tree work itself. They made it cool, I think. I mean, I, I've even got the the heart tree sticker on my car. You know, it's just a cool... It's tree is your life, or, isn't it? That's my life. <laughs> <laughs> live, and, live and breathe it. But they were always very good at um, encouraging innovative ideas, always funding <clears throat> something a little different um, and opening it up into the industry. 
things that guys are like, oh, why are they selling that? that yeah. I don't know. They had the yeah. aerial friction brake, yeah. like, uh, which was a, essentially a, a block in the tree, which had the use of a porter wrap and a block in one and a climate can control rigging scenarios, you know, and they're forefront thinking, forward thinking, should I say. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I think with their, they had a really good idea with their innovation lab because they just kept churning out um, products. Some of them worked, some of them didn't work, but they were, they were always like thinking of ideas like a bit outside the box um, and, and the ones that took off like really took off and then the ones that didn't obviously just like phase them out and um, no great loss probably yeah it's no great loss but if if you hit that one main product that like goes crazy and everybody starts using it and like that's that's when you make a mint so but i think i don't know i um because none of us know too much about it yet i was i was actually um emailing with luke and and trying to get him on a phone call for this particular podcast so hopefully if uh, i get in touch with him in the next day or two i might be able to tack it on the end of this podcast otherwise it might be on the next one um which it should be really interesting because all we know so far is just from seeing pictures through social media that they've that they've bought that show the bought tree stuff but it would actually be interesting to kind of get luke's take on it and his reasons behind it and and like he's he's going to know more than anybody what he thinks will happen as far as the like the operating of each business goes and if everything's going to stay the same if the staff are going to stay and they're going to operate exactly the same as if nothing's happened yeah, that's people's biggest concern is like customer yeah. service not being the same yeah definitely i think that's gonna hopefully like, it yeah. just continues in the same vein mm. i think that's what everyone wants yeah but the i mean the the biggest point of it all is that cheryl um I, th I think they're probably the biggest tree equipment supplier and they've bought out their their second biggest tree equipment supplier so it, they kind of get getting a monopoly on the market which hopefully Keep doesn't tree north industries doom. out there uh, hopefully uh, hopefully <laughs> doesn't have a um a bad effect on the industry but you could see it happening because they're they're buying the competitors so yeah um so yeah, it'll be really interesting to get Luke's take on that um, and get more detail about it, but um, only time will tell. We'll see. So, um, so while we were talking about actually doing this first episode, it was probably about three, four weeks before the BC comp um, happened, which was two weekends ago now. Um, and when I was talking to you guys about it, it kind of became the obvious topic that the first episode was going to be about. Um, and then you just went and won it. <laughs> yeah, that's what he wants to talk about. He's just trying to be all humble and stuff in there, isn't it? He's like, oh, you know, well, maybe, maybe we could talk about the competition or, you know. Yeah, I was just... <laughs> I just wanted to get in that... I just wanted to get that in there first, oh, just, you know. Before everybody thought that yeah. we were talking about it. <laughs> who won it? Who won it? Because, yeah. of, the, who, who because, won of, it? because of a certain victory by, <laughs> by someone. Dan Krause won it, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, so I'm, I'm like the biggest advocate on tree climbing competitions um, because I think I think anybody that does them or anybody that's involved in like volunteering or the organization I think you get so much out of it um, yeah. I I certainly did on in, in my first competition and then like competitions that followed like the years after but that I remember that first competition that I entered I just I just learned so much like, I just think I, learned... like, I remember learning that I need to climb. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I remember <laughs> shitting the bed. I was just swinging upside down. He's like, "Oh, okay." I think it's I think it's very much like that for everybody, to be honest, because you go in. Apart from me and Matt, <laughs> the two expert climbers right here. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. But go yeah, on. you like you go in with I don't know. You you maybe have some kind of expectation. Um, it's probably best to go in with zero expectation, but you certainly get humbled in your uh, in your first competition. Go into everything um, with zero expectation. Yeah, yeah. it's a good mantra. That's right there, isn't it? Right <laughs> for you, George. Always. Um. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's. I mean, I'm 
that's why I'm the, uh, uh, like a real advocate for these competitions and encourage everybody I meet if they've never competed in a competition before. Well, I think I, pretty I, much I, all like, three of us have only competed because we've met you. That's pretty much right, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I mean, hats off to you, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad that you you took the bait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just a great way to network and meet people. It as is. Well, you know? It is. It's, um, it's a proper little community. You get much. You you get much more out of it than <clears throat> than just the climbing. Um, you like, I think maybe seventy five percent of people that I'm friends with now in the Arb community in the Pacific Northwest, I've probably met through the competitions and and then met friends of theirs and and just as that rip. Like the ripple effect. Yeah. So I'm sure it's the same in in most comps the world over, regional ones at least. The, you you're always brand new the first time. You don't know anybody, but the second, third time you go, all the familiar faces are there again, and it's just the same sort of family of people coming out, and it's very much relaxed and a lot of fun. True, but one thing about tree competitions, though, I think, is that everyone's so supportive. Yeah. Whereas in a lot of other competitions, there's there's so much competition that sometimes you don't get that encouragement. Whereas this one, it's kind of yeah. across the board. Yeah. Everyone helps out, shares gear. Yeah. And just like definitely, well, most people share well. gear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, 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 there's definitely a good, yeah. <laughs> there's a good sort of ethos around learning and and sharing that knowledge, and like encouraging people to do well. Absolutely. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so the BC comp, which is the one that we just competed in, is actually, it's not an ISA comp anymore. Um, for for certain reasons, Ryan decided he was all, the organizer of the BC comp for like the last maybe five, six years now. Um, and I remember when I first competed in the BC comp, it was an ISA. Uh, but then I think three years ago, he decided to go off on his own with his own direction. I think he wanted, he had ideas for um, making a few events um, and kind of trying to reinvest some of the um, admission fee back into equipment so that he could, you know, keep keep growing the competition. And definitely, definitely after that first one till now, so there's this, the one that we just competed in was the third of the non-ISA format. And I think by far it was the best one so far. Um, it was a great location. Um, I think the atmosphere around it was like there seemed to be more people than I've seen at any kind of regional or chapter you say if you, if competition. For <laughs> <laughs> me, it was slightly worse than the, uh, the year before. Yeah, you know, it dropped a few places. <laughs> <laughs> dropped a ball. Well, at least you didn't drop any gear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least you weren't DQ for dropping gear, though. Like you would yeah. be in an yeah. ISA. Which you should have been. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hold yeah. on. You're taking uh, the win from him. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> Low blow, Georgie. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, I, d I just thought it was... Uh, it, Ryan puts on such a good competition, like, yeah. the way he organises yeah. it. He's, so, like, everything, he's got everything down to a T now. Um, the amount of the amount of public that were out there watching it because it was in a, a park down by the river and like nice mm -hmm. hot weather, it, like it just created for a great atmosphere. And this is the first time he's had, I think, two vendors selling equipment, um, which adds even more to the competition. Which is great because you can walk between the two of them and uh, say that the other guy is selling it for less. <laughs> <laughs> Or if you if you won, George, you just get given a lot more gear. That's maybe or <laughs> try harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sit, play them off against each other. But you definitely got to give like a pretty big shout out to Camloop City and like Brian for sort of pushing that there to get it in that public park. Definitely. Because like, I think that. Yeah. There. Yeah. So it was in it was in Camloops in BC, um, and I think um, it was a a big part of it was to Brian. I think his surname is. But I'm probably butchering that. Um, yeah, absolutely butchered that. So yeah, him and Darren uh, Roselli both work for Kamloops, and we're really pushing hard um, to get the comp there. And obviously, they approached Ryan, and Ryan was over the moon to have not have to work hard and go and seek a venue out. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so thanks to those guys uh, at Kamloops. Yeah. And, um, yeah, because I think everyone, yeah, everyone's worry was if you go into Camel Loops, the trees aren't going to be big enough. Yeah, that's yeah, that's oh, what everybody said. Yeah, that's what everybody said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
but in that park, yeah, yeah, the trees that they were amazing. So. And they were just all located quite close to each other as well, which was nice. Yeah. Of kept everything contained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with you, Georgie. How how was your comp? How did you find it? Comp? That was good. Um, had a great time as always, and I'm always I'm not I'm not super competitive person. Uh, <laughs> Just because you don't do well, George, doesn't mean you say you're not super competitive. Put that caveat in there, first of all. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, I'm always probably like a lot of people, like pretty nervous before a competition. Not sure if I really want to compete, but I always, and this is my only second, my only my second comp. Let's. Uh, Get that clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very competitive. It's just going to put a couple of cameras. I don't know what I'm doing. It <laughs> seems to work. <laughs> no, um, and I, I missed a few, and I kind of wish I'd gone to them. Went to this one, and as I kind of expected, came out of it. Sort of, it reinvigorated my love for, for tree work in the industry because there's so many cool people, and it's just such a such a great thing to do. Um, the comp itself was wicked, the weather was great, the venue was spot on. Um, it was nice having the, the wags there. <laughs> yeah, we had, yeah, we had all, the, all the girlfriends out. Three, <laughs> three wags. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a great crowd, everyone there was wicked. Um, the individual events, the work climb, started on the work climb, uh, and I think, I think it's, it's always hard to start on the work climb. Me and Fernandez were in the same group and uh, it's it's always easier if you've seen a whole bunch of people do the work climb and you've seen you've seen from the ground what works and what doesn't work. But to be sort of second and third up or third and fourth wherever yeah. we were, it's pretty tricky. And uh, I made the mistake of not asking the tech when I got up there where all the stations were to get to point it out, which I know I'll, I'll know to do next time because I missed a really obvious one. Probably the easiest station to grab. Like, <laughs> right below, right the, next to the, starting right below the starting bell. bell. May as well have been the starting bell. And which I, missed which it I and... got on my next go and just winked at you. This <laughs> yeah, yeah, is the yeah. one, George, yeah. Dickhead. <laughs> um, you didn't score more though, did you, Matt? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, so that was um, mild frustration, but otherwise, like, I think I had a good climb, and I had it in my head that this time, this time around, I wanted to, I just wanted to get out of the tree before the timing stopped, and I wanted to try get and hit the, out. yeah, yeah, I wanted to hit the landing circle, so achieved that, didn't hit all the stations, but had a, had a good time, canopy access was an interesting one, um, ridiculously easy, climb up, hit the bell, move across the canopy, land it in, hit another bell, get out the tree. I mean, it was a small, small maple for um, for those who weren't there. Um, but and that was interesting. Sort of seeing how you, Dan, were were, were as as the more experienced competitor among us were uh, more interested in how they were scoring all the events. Competitive competitor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been to more comps, and you know, you know, you know how the deal works a bit more than we do. Um, and you, you seem to be asking a lot of the judges, oh, what, what are you marking on here? Is it, is it, you know, is, is time a big factor or is it other things? And um, that's something I'll try next time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a bit, a bit more vocal. Well, yeah. The thing is, Ask like, steal a few score sheets, you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I saw any of you guys do that event, but I'd, I'd seen a few people, and it, it kind of, I was, I was trying to figure out if there was like some, some trick to it like if it there suddenly became harder for some reason as you got up there because it seemed so simple um so then i watched a few guys go and it, it was it just that's what it was it was like really simple so i wanted to know like i wanted to see the score sheet for starters and so i asked one of the yeah. judges i was like oh you got a, uh, do you have a blank score sheet um <laughs> they denied and it, I actually, yeah like... <laughs> I, actually, I actually knew the guy one of the judges and so i knew the guy that i asked and he was just like <laughs> No, you can't have one. I was no. like, what? And I just, <laughs> I just want to have a look at a blank score sheet. Um, but finally I got hold of one and I just <laughs> kind of... Because there, there was so many points for it. It was like 80 points for this one event, which is like a ridiculous amount of points. And I was trying to figure out where they were all being like, accrued and stuff. And um, So yeah, I studied the score sheet and just thought it was about 
being as smooth as possible, and that was you how got it, top which, three, right? When, when did uh, you win that? I, I yeah, that. I won that one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the uh, that was the only did one of one of smooth and the other middle name. <laughs> but what was all about me, being smooth, mate? You were too erratic. What, what threw me through a loop was uh, shortly before I went. Uh, Isaac did it, and Isaac flew through, and the judges came over and said, "Oh, that was the that was the fastest time yet." So I was instantly thinking, "We were led to believe it was Leg a speed it. event." <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I didn't do it particularly fast anyway. <laughs> I think yeah. it takes a long time. I, to I think you've got second, to, you've got to understand if ever you watch okay, Isaac yeah. at any <laughs> if ever you watch Isaac at any event, it's going to be fast. Um, so there's no point, so there's no point in trying to keep up with him. <laughs> fast like... and smooth, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> so what about your ascent? Ascent. Yeah, balls up the ascent first time around because I <laughs> forgot to <laughs> forgot to clip my chest uh, tether in. Oh, so we just tell so just for those listening. Um, so the at the BC comp because it's not an ISA comp now. Instead of the footlock, um, we have a open ascent, so you can. It's basically the same. Like you, you got to have get up to fifty foot. So there's a bell at fifty foot, but you can ascend in any form you like. So yeah, obviously for most people, SRT. Um, is quicker than footlock, um, <clears throat> so that's what most people would do. So, so for this one, I just, I just use my wrench and my my normal uh, ascent tools. I use my rope wrench every every day in work. You know, uh, what was it? A foot sander on the right foot, um, and basically uh, my version of a of a hard <laughs> system, which is uh, my crawl. On a on a, a long foot loop, so it's suspended at the knee, and then the bungee wrap around my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> so I look a bit like Pinocchio, but it worked. It worked well enough when I when I clip the when I remember to clip the chest tether in. So yeah, first time round, forgot to clip that in. So that was a bit of a crap time. But we get a second go. You get two goes at the ascent, and second time was fifteen seconds. Yeah, so I'm only quick, two yeah. seconds slower than you guys. Wasn't too that's bad. Yeah, one too bad. That's good. So that was that, but it's quite a low-scoring event if you if you're thinking about the competition, the ascent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. quite a low proportion, but it's a good, it's a it's a fun one to try and nail and try, nice. try and get below thirteen seconds, whichever yeah. <laughs> you guys managed to do. Um, so that one went well eventually, and then the throw line was the throw line uh, event was a whole pile of wank for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, well, it definitely was for me as well. It was close though. I, yeah. The throw, so, so for the for the listeners, the throw line event was a, a large elm, American elm tree, um, which split off into two two stems really, which made up the canopy. And on on, on each side of the canopy, there was low markers which were blue, mid range markers. These are, these are marking out the crotches with with tape for you to aim at with your throw ball. Uh, mid-range mark was yellow, and right at the tippy tops were the pinks. Um, and you'd score, what was it, two for a blue, four for a yellow, six for a pink, or eight for a pink, something like that? Yeah, two for a six. And then if you if you managed to link a line between two both sides of the canopy, so scoring on the right stem and the left stem, uh, then you got a multiple of that score. Um, yeah, so it was which quite, was an interesting it was, one. It was slightly different from the, from the ISA comp. You could actually... You could actually throw through two um, two forks with two lines, or you could even manipulate one line to go through the two target forks, and then install one rope through both forks. Like, mm. say, if you're ascending like on an SRT system and base anchor, like, and then so if you install planning your redirects, yeah. So if you installed the one rope through the two target forks you're aiming for, then you, you then got a, a multiplier on your score. So. Um, I think that threw a few people off because because that was in their mind. They, they thought, "Oh, I'll get more points for this," and and I think everybody then seemed to be trying to do that. And I wasn't. I was trying to go <laughs> as simple as possible. And you got one blue. I got. I got blue. <laughs> <laughs> I got six points. So maybe a blue is six points. I don't know. And you with get a, a rope with a rope through. Yeah, and it was pretty close to getting a yellow on the other side. Hit the crotch Just didn't quite a lot of times. <laughs> Inches away, inches as away always. from the crotch. <laughs> yeah, I got inches away from the crotch, and then it was all over <laughs> in fifteen seconds. <laughs> How'd you get on, Matty? Um, yeah, I had a great climb. Thanks, Joel. The day was great. Um, I don't want to 
blabber on because George has just covered that pretty well. <laughs> oh, what you said, you blabbered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, work climb went well. I thought I'd had a great climb, but when I checked out the preliminary results, I'd you did have a good climb, I saw you climb. I'd sharpened it somewhere. No, both, you boys, both you boys climbed pretty well. Yeah. I thought you, yeah. I, I, yours was one that I did see, and I thought you were, you were climbing pretty well. But I didn't land. But... Same, I don't know if you've seen some of the Matt Fernandez project yeah. videos. I've got this train <laughs> where when I come down... <laughs> <there's> not... <laughs> Shameless Matt, plug. Matt Fernandez <laughs> project videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you seem, to, you, seem to always, you seem to always forget about your tail and you yeah. get caught every day. Yeah, and it with snags my leg as I'm coming bending, down. Aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just can't finish. <laughs> I think you like hearing that ooh <laughs> noise when, you, when everybody sees you like jolt just before that. Half hitch my leg on the tail end of my rope. <laughs> so um, I didn't land. And then what Then what do we did? We did the um, canopy access. Canopy access, yeah. which I just went quick with didn't score I scored average I suppose my um silver lining was the speed ascent which, which you pretty much won I, I came second yeah second, I was happy with yeah, that yeah. and I I'd not really trained much for the competition I'm so not... modest should, <laughs> should, uh, uh, Fernandez, yeah. when you see him as, ascending a rope SRT he seems to bounce an extra couple of feet every stroke he takes with his ascenders <laughs> he's so light <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah. and strong. I did. I was pretty tired by the end of the day, so I did. Well, I did one ascent and was happy with that. I didn't. I didn't really do my second one. Crouching and looking tiger, at... hidden raptor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, he's got the lines. He's, got, he's, 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 he's sitting there last night, wasn't he? He's, he's going like, I'm going to come up with some <laughs> wicked yeah, lines. I'm going to lie. <laughs> Look at his notepad. <laughs> so that one's come up. Oh, I haven't got, I haven't got well. a comeback. No, it's all right. I take it. I'm used to it. Um, <laughs> so you did your first yeah, one. You're happy with that? I did my first one. I was happy with that. I didn't bother with the second one. But when I saw the final times, and I was point three, I think point three behind Tiger Divine, who got first. Point three seconds Shout behind. out to Tiger. Yeah, he did well. I should have done a second run, really. Oh, we think you might beat him. You should have should done. Not saying. You should have done. Should have. I was happy with second. You know, I don't. Oh. He was like, I'm not going to bother him. Really? Matt, if you're, oh, you just... look tired, man. Yeah, I'm just, I'm I'm embarrass save, yourself. Save myself for the throw line. You might forget to clip your tether in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was, I went well. It was, it was weird as well because they weren't telling you what your times were on the ascent. Um, oh, really? No. no. So nobody, like, mm. you had to. A... I, I heard them say Matt's time because I was still watching. Sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you still told me not to do a second run. No. You... Yeah. No, <laughs> That's fast enough, man. Cheers, mate. <laughs> You'll melt the rope otherwise. Fuck it. Massive shout out to Elliot Wright, though, on the oh, belay. Yeah, he, he did do yeah. a good job. Yeah. All day pulling 50 feet worth of rope, what, 30 times? Spent all day yeah. pulling his rope. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Dad, let, tell us. Should, wait, can we, can we just mention that Joel was in the uh, work climb tree taking pictures of everybody? Beautiful pictures. Yeah, we haven't. Uh, yeah, we want to hear about. Well, my experience of sitting still for eight hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was great fun. <laughs> my, feet, did, my feet were numb. But you did get some epic pictures, though. Thank you. Like, yeah. So if uh, if you want to see some of the pictures of uh, the BC comp, go to joelspooner.com and there's a you go through to the galleries and you'll see the gallery of the BC comp 2016. Um, Joel was in a work climb tree all day long. Um, and I imagine by the end of it, it was getting pretty tiresome, but he still managed to get some epic pictures. Um, really good pictures which is is wicked because like because you make me look good at these at these comps like there's always people taking pictures but to actually get professional pictures that have been like you know that you do some post editing on and all that sort of stuff they look pretty epic oh, so. cheers to the shout out on that yeah that's good and it's just good to watch like all the guys climb as well and girls because um, I think like what George was saying when he's nervous as the one common thing throughout every climber, whether they're a beginner, like intermediate or top of the game, yeah. everyone was nervous. Yeah. Everyone was up there. Was Dan Krause yeah, nervous? I was say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe Dan Krause and I can't imagine Krause and, and Isaac they but they're just very relaxed characters, yeah. aren't they? They just yeah. float around the tree. Yeah, Isaac yeah. Isaac. You know, it's just second nature to them. But they, but everyone, yeah, there's there's there yeah. they going through how they're going to do it, watching everyone come up in the boom, they're just all looking around, going, yep. okay, planning their route, doing this, thinking about what they're going to do. Uh, and it's just great to see 
from that point of view, watching everyone, how they all sort of... Well, it was almost predictable where people were going to go and what they were going to do. What's for you? You've seen every single one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Shame you didn't get to climb at the end, mate, because you were the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, no, it was, it, was, it, was a good, it was a good viewpoint. What, what was the story? I didn't see this. What was the story at the end of the day where Joel couldn't get out of the tree? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't... <laughs> I, 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 I don't even... Oh, well, I'm going to ask if you want this beard. I, I, don't, even, I don't even know the story, but I remember you talking <laughs> about I know, it. I, I can it's, recall it's it. It's a little bit embellished, I think. I can recall it pretty well. Out, out of respect for my friend Joel, I wasn't going to mention this. <laughs> But, well, uh, put it this put it this way. They, they managed to <laughs> couldn't work out how to set up a double line system to repel out of a crotch. They managed to tidy up every single station <laughs> oh, of every fuck. other tree, and even the it tree, was getting dark. The I tree tech for the work climb trade even managed to secure all the bells and get them down to the ground and retrieve his line. So I'm not, I'm not going to bite this hook. <laughs> they'd added up all the preliminary scores. We'd all gathered around the gazebo to hear who'd come in what positions, and Joel's still in the tree trying to get down. I think was <laughs> set up a system. So what, what do you want? Uh, well, the thing is, comment. he wanted to keep the ropes he was using in, in absolute prime condition, and he didn't have a, a friction saver. Was the problem? Well, you know, I care about the trees. Absolutely. Yeah, so they're in the old bark there. <laughs> <laughs> George, help me! Send me a cambium saver. Local cam. And then they bloody send me some fucking retrievable I tried, I cambium saver thing. About six times <laughs> that, until uh, it became so obvious. <laughs> you were probably you were so dehydrated and hungry, and we just <laughs> left you. <laughs> Blowing his emergency whistle. Yeah. <laughs> Get me down. Send the boom truck. I should have got oh. a photo of that and put it on my website. You boys are so good to me. <laughs> What was the next topic on there, Dan? <laughs> Wait, we well, haven't heard you, about Dan's time. Yeah, about your I'm dropping your gear and all that. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'll, um, so being the uber competitor that I am, yeah, I've, like, ever since I was little, I've got this, like, super competitive streak. For so. the benefit of the tape, <laughs> Dan is sitting on a chair that's much taller than all of ours. <laughs> so that he can feel a bit better about himself. Um, so, basically, the, the day didn't start off too great for me um i started with throw line which is by far my achilles heel yes achilles heel my problem event um and it was just that um for the bc comp which i scored the big fat zero um, beat him on the throw line you got a zero <laughs> yeah got shit big fat zero mate <laughs> Yeah, turned yeah. it around, though, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, which which was maybe which was maybe a good thing because after the throw line event, I was like, well, like with the with the the climbers that were there, I was like, there's no chance of like making a masters. So, I kind of relaxed a little bit, and I was just like, well, I'm just gonna climb and have fun and just kind of try and make it up on like the other events, work climb and stuff. But I was pretty certain that I wouldn't get into the masters, so. Yeah, it just relaxed me a little, and then, and then the next one I had a work climb. I had was work climb, which like went really, really well. I had 0.25 a second once I got down to spare. Wow. <laughs> so, when did you place in that then? Um, no. I think fourth or fifth. I wasn't in the top three, but I think fourth or fifth. So. Mm. Right. Uh, I could hear the crowd cheering for you whilst I was doing the canopy access. <laughs> took that energy. That was Joel playing uh, <laughs> playing sound effects. On the yeah, yeah. So far, I'm struggling to add up how you yeah, even no, got into the masters. Yeah. Yeah. No points for three like, line. Fifth on the work. Who, who did you bribe? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bought his way in. Yeah, bribe some <laughs> couple of reach arounds. Um, I don't know that technique. And then, so then there was like canopy access, which I've already spoke about. It was like, it was pretty simple. Um, and yeah, I was just like, I say that I relaxed and I didn't think I was getting through, but I still was speaking to the judges about point scoring. So I must have, I must have still been pretty, pretty eager to do well. Um, Always. So, so yeah, I mean, canopy access for me was just about being as, as smooth as I could be on, a, on an easy event, um, which worked out pretty well um, and then what was the final oh yeah the ascent was the final one you came third um, yeah. Yeah. yeah I came uh, <clears throat> loser to Matty Fernandez. yeah I know what's that, what's that? 
<laughs> it was kind of a, it was, like, yeah, it was kind of a repeat of the the Matt Fernandez project where he pitched me to the post. You just do it to keep him happy. Don't you? You just like, <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. I was looking at my watch, being like, oh, I'll just wait for it to yeah. pass over thirteen point two, and then I'll ring the bell. <laughs> no, it's um, no, I gave it everything I had, um, and so fair play to. I suppose I've got a high. Matt, you high saying you couldn't do better. I could not do better. Dan, that's not the attitude. I could not do better. No. So. But I will next time. You had less friction, <laughs> yeah. didn't you? And I even had more practice. Than shave his head next time. <laughs> Lycra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spandex oh, man. Wrap him in cling film and you're like, send him back. Grease him. <laughs> so, so when they, I mean, so when they were, were reading out the results, it was, it was a big surprise and a bit of a shock when I got through to the masters. So. Um, but you found those eggs, especially because the, there was only it was only three in the masters. Like sometimes mm. in competitions are little four or five, but because it was only three, I was like I must have literally squeaked in, um, especially after scoring the zilch on the throw line. And then so so masters was obviously the Sunday the day after, and I was up against a former world champ, but. Uh, yeah, former world champ Dan Krause, who's decided to come back this year, being his fiftieth year, so he really wants to compete. Wow, fiftieth uh, year yeah. in the in the world, not as a tree guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's he is fifty, um, <laughs> but he's he's still pretty much better than any of us lot, uh, which is pretty impressive. He's, he's like, like he's, he's like the wicked, like... he's like the f- the the fittest fifty year old man. Yeah. Um, I got, I he's, say, he's, he's like an absolute whiz. Like I've never seen a guy use a throw ball like Dan Krause. If, like, um, if you're not from the Pacific Northwest, then you probably won't have seen him use a throw ball unless you've competed against him at the Worlds. Because I don't think. Um, hopefully, I'm, I'll approach. I'm going to approach him and try and get him to do a video on his throw line manipulation and techniques. Because he did a he did a workshop at the last year's BC Comp, and it, it was like it was absolutely breathtaking. It was like. Mm. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. He, he, there was a big, big oak tree, big spready oak tree, and he, he threw into a low hanging sort of uh, fork, uh, what, 15 feet up? Yeah. Got his little swing on his throw ball, and then with a quick flick of his wrist, uh, the throw ball was suddenly pelted up to the, the, the money shot center highest fork safe to tie in at the top of the tree. It's, it's the yeah. weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I didn't learn anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it wasn't just much inspired. Of a, we just watched, yeah. it, we just learned, watched an absolute... I just learned fun. to try hard. You learned how bad you <laughs> are. <laughs> but he did say that he did spend many unsociable hours just sitting in a park throwing a ball into a tree. Yeah, yeah he's a bit weird. Yeah. But... <laughs> nice guy. But he's got the technique yeah. down to a T. Yeah, yeah. Absolute T. And, and it's not easy. It's like, it like so, so I, was, I was speaking to him and I said... So when I saw him do that workshop, I was like, how do you get the the throw ball to swing in any direction you want? Because it's easy to go the direction that it wants to go, like yeah. back and forward, which yeah. like, like the, the direction of the fork will mm-hmm. automatically make the throw ball swing in a certain direction. But he seems to be able to get it to go around in circles, get it to swing against what he wants to do. And I'm like, it's just... It was his like, magic. It's just absolute magic. I I have no idea how he does it, and I haven't seen anybody else being able to do it like he does. So, um, it'd be interesting to to see some guys out there that can do the same. Cause, and he also throws the throw ball like overarm, which I've never seen before. I've seen Gareth yeah. do that. Have you seen it? Gareth yeah. from Gareth maybe yeah. did that because he competed against. Right, that's where he learned it. It's, it's, it's a good technique though. <laughs> I've, I've yeah. tried it a couple of times. Yeah, and it kind of. It's good technique for, for getting for more vertical shots. Yeah, if, if it's exactly, good for putting out going... car windscreens. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Or throwing backwards. <laughs> he, he's a wizard with the throw line, but he's he's also like watching him climb. Oh, he's smooth. He's insane. Yeah. It's so smooth. And of of the three masters, not to take anything away from from Dan and Tiger, but watching watching Dan Kraus, no one made it look easier than he did. He mm. climbed that tree like it was a little, you yeah. Know, 20 foot Jack Maple yeah. and everyone else it, it, for, for the other guys it seemed like it, it was work but <laughs> yeah. no he's he's, he's super yeah, he's smooth. Very smooth. Yeah, kept it simple and super smooth he's just relaxed yeah Good whilst up. commentating on everything that he's yeah, doing no. and why <laughs> yeah. and yeah, yeah very 
very pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very impressive. Like it's it's crazy because this year is the first year that I've ever seen him compete because it, he's decided to compete in his fiftieth year. So mm -hmm. he competed in the Portland comp, which was uh, about a month ago, which he which he won. Um, and yeah, just seeing him seeing him like do the footlock like as a 50 year old guy and he's still smashing like a 17 second footlock it's just wow yeah it's crazy it's, wow. it's pretty pretty he's really good at hacky sack as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um he can sink a few beers he tried to push a few more down him for, for, you, for your sake dan but he wasn't having it he experienced yeah um so yeah, like the the masters climb for me was um, was a bit of a roller coaster climb. <laughs> so so the 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 thing that really relaxed me about the masters climb in the BC comp is that they already set the throw lines, and because my worst event is the throw line, that made me quite happy. <laughs> so so I was pretty I was pretty relaxed when I went in. I'd kind of had a I had a plan. I went last of the three. There was Dan Cross went first, Tiger, and then myself, and then the women had gone before them. So I had like pretty much all day. To sit and tinker and worry, yeah, worry and <laughs> let the nerves get to me. <laughs> Vomit. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I thought I came up with a, a pretty good, a pretty good plan and a pretty good system. And then, so I went with that and pulled up my pulled up my axis line, which connected to that was was um, a rope that I bundled up, which kind of went up into the canopy, and then um, another rope which was my axis line. Everyone uh, shouting you, Dan, you've got a knot in your line, you've got a knot in your line. <laughs> yeah, as this big, like, 124 <laughs> rope goes up. <laughs> yeah, obviously, I <laughs> I had done that on purpose. <laughs> but, um, but the first thing that tripped me up was, I, for whatever reason, I don't know why, I tied my rope wrench on the very beginning of the rope that was pulling up. So I had to take it off before I even started, which kind of was... A stupid mistake which I'll hopefully never do again um, and then yeah once I once I got to the canopy there is a there's what they call a secret station at the BC comp they, they tell you just before you go in that they told us that there was a, a nest that you had to inspect and check out and see if it was active so um, when you get once you got up into the canopy you have to kind of have a look around and see if you could spot this nest and then that was the secret station so you were getting all the points of a regular station, like your approach and all that sort of stuff. Um, and after I after I got down, I I heard that nobody else had actually gone over to this cavity in the tree and in, to see if there was anything in there. Which there was some chocolate eggs, so I took all four. No, nice. um, and you were actually very humorous about it as well. I, I yeah. thought when I when you got to that station, I really saw you like relax quite a lot actually, because you just saw the the, Finally, the fun chocolate. side of it. Sugar, <laughs> Dan changes with sugar. sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I mean I think I was pretty relaxed because there was 25 minutes and the throw lines were already there, so I knew that there was loads of time for the comp. Uh, and so, then, and then the, the dreaded hitch climber. And dropped. then the disaster. <laughs> then the disaster happened. So I, because because it's not an ISA comp, the some of the rules have changed. They're more but, relaxed. But a lot of the rules are still the same. You kind of. There's there's a lot of similarities, but they've changed some of the rules. And obviously, I hadn't read all the rules because it's just a it's a tree comp, and you assume it's pretty similar. But um, one thing I I did remember is that in the work climb, if you drop a piece of gear, it's not a immediate disqualification, but you do have to stop what you're doing, lanyard on, ask for the piece of gear to be tied on, pull it back up, <clears throat> attach it, and then carry on. So it kind of wastes a bit of time. So while I was fumbling about changing ropes for whatever reason i took every single bit of gear off the line had it all in my hands thought i clipped it all together <laughs> and like sweaty where, palms <laughs> sweaty palms and, and pinto <laughs> when, 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 <laughs> when i was doing it i just looked all, i was thinking looking at all the gear in my hand thinking i've got a pulley a friction hitch a rope wrench a carabiner all separate thinking god this <laughs> this could easily go peak tongue right now i could like i could drop this but so then i clipped it all together with the carabiner or so i thought clipped on my harness and as i clipped on my harness i just saw this like hitch climber pulley 
falling like in slow motion. I was like, oh. I was just standing over the George. Crap. We just saw it in slow motion. This little oh, red no, bunny like, flying down from the tree, that. hitting the ground. We were just yeah. like, shit. Especially because he had four other hitch climber pulleys on his head. <laughs> 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 what are you doing? <laughs> hitch climber for every day of the week. <laughs> Um, and then, like, as soon as, like, before I even hit the ground, I was like, damn, that's, like, that is a disqualification. And, but, and I've been sat there, like, in isolation, like, listening to the crowd cheering for all the other climbers throughout the day. So I must have been sat there for, what, like, four hours. And to drop a pulley, like, halfway through the master's climb, I was just like, that's, I don't know, it's just such an idiotic Something Joel would move. Do. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Exactly, Joel. <laughs> you won't be in the oh, wait, sorry, yeah. As he drops his camera <laughs> out of the tree. <laughs> you turn it on. <laughs> um, and yeah, and I was just like, everything seemed to be going so well. I had a good plan and it was all it was all going to plan. And but to your I credit, know. you... But then I was like, yeah, I, I said... You so, glazed yeah, over it pretty So Kafaki was in the tree and he, he was like the tech in the tree and he had communication with the ground and I was just like he said he initially said to me oh that's a DQ so I said to him well I'm going to carry on anyway because I've not been I've not been waiting here for four hours to climb this tree (laughs) get like a third of the way through and then get down again so I was just like tell him I'm just going to carry on and like enjoy it and whatever yeah like (laughs) complete the climb yeah so so I carried on uh, I was like rerouting my rope I can't remember if I got the third bell or not. You were on your way. You were yeah, on your way to the third bell. You third bell because Murphy was rampantly on his phone like trying to check the rules. Check, yeah. And then they, they got them. And then, um, then yeah, yeah then, and then, I think they By the time you'd got the third bell, I think you'd been told to lanyard in. Yeah. And then they had to send up the... Send the up before you, you got the yeah, plumb line. Before, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so then... So when they radioed through and then Kafaki was like, it's not DQ, it's just minus 10. <clears throat> carry on going just pretty but, kind but you can, yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> minus 10 in the master's climb it's pretty generous when there's about 300 in this one was about 350 points available or something it was uh, yeah it was very which lean. means you could have it's dropped very lean. basically a couple could have of friction all, savers all my hitch climbers yeah. <laughs> every single hitch climber and he still might have won <laughs> <laughs> you should uh, just get like mug of the comp award or something like yeah <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> Joel, you've already taken that. <laughs> trying to get on the tree. Just trying to pass, I'm just trying to pass it on to someone else. <laughs> yeah, so that was, I mean, that was a climb. Finished the limb walk, got down. Tried, yeah. tried a good old trick that I saw Robert Bundy do, who is uh, pretty much the master in the PNW. Um, one of the first comps I ever saw him do, I saw him pack all his gear away into a, a nice box nice and neat so having like two minutes left i thought as i'm retrieving my gear i'd try and pack as much as it away into a bag that i could i don't know if you get extra points for that but <laughs> it looks pretty cool and <laughs> i had the time so yeah i thought why not do it keeping it um, tidy yeah you thought you had your time it didn't didn't seem like that from where we were still. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were like, everyone's sweating, hurry up, hurry up. Everyone's, everyone's like, screaming at him and going, God, Paul, Paul, your lines and Polishing stuff. Polishing the hitch climber, he dropped out of the Fucking hell. Uh, still had a minute and a half to spare, so I could have packed, yeah, even, I could have got some knots out of the third line. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, was... which, which I'm sure Ryan Murphy is still trying to unpick all those knots that I put in his third line. But... <laughs> um, yeah, so shout out to Ryan. <laughs> yeah, so that yeah, was, a, yeah. a, that, that was that, and it was, so yeah. that, and that was the first uh, first one I'd won, which was a pretty awesome feeling. By by the time you finished your climb, and ever all, all was said and done, but the the scores hadn't been announced, it was pretty hard to tell who was in pole position. Do you, you think, so quite often? Yeah, for, it was for hard. me from from where I was standing, anyway, like. And and from the comp so I've seen before, you can usually tell who's who's the overall winner. Mm. But um, Dan Krause was super smooth, super pro looking, um, super relaxed. But he snapped that branch, which had to be pruned out. I think it was already snapped as well, though. I don't think he lost too much for that. I think there you go. I think there's a weak point on it. Um, mm. 
Tiger didn't do too bad either. No, he was smooth. And Dan dropped but, the pulley, so but, but, it was... Yeah, true. But Holiday made every station, though. Yeah. And and so, because Tiger didn't even... Oh, no, uh, he looked in. He didn't really know how much to make it. He didn't go straight down to it. No. He 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 looked in. I think I think and just and just shouted how many eggs he thought he saw from from a from a distance. Whereas Dan was the only one that actually kind of went in, inspected it. So I think in terms, you probably got four points for that. If it, yeah, if I think it was I think, that, I think that, was, could, that was maybe make or break for. I think know, I think that's for, like between yeah. especially between me and Tiger because Tiger yeah. wasn't. Too many points behind. No. Uh, if I was judging that composition, you'd have been DQ'd twice. Like, first, <laughs> first for dropping the. Well, for, actually, first for fucking taking the eggs out of the nest. <laughs> You're such a ruthless. What are you doing? Really? Taking the eggs out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> they might, you're meant to they might be in danger of chocolate yeah. eggs. Yeah, it could have been some rare species. <laughs> I was bringing them down for you, George. You ungrateful. <laughs> and he's on a bloody sugar diet as well, isn't he? True. Well, hang on, not, hang on, non sugar. Non sugar. Sorry, sorry. Even, sorry. <laughs> the sugar diet. By the time they came back, Dan eats nothing. That's what sugar. Matt's on, the sugar yeah. diet. <laughs> <laughs> they were a melted mess by the time they came down in your pocket. Yeah. And palm them off to people. Um. So, yeah. So another, so just a, a quick brief on the the women's masters. Um, a bit of a more serious topic, but well, not naming any names, but there was um, one of the girls got DQ. Well, before you go into that, they did an epic job. Though, they, they did. They did like, a wicked job. Like and, terms, and there was and it was a tough, a good like, bunch of competitors there. It was yeah. more, more like unusually high number of women. The most, there's four, the most there's four in total, wasn't there? Yeah, it's uh, usually four, four, yeah. yeah. There was four. Yeah, which is probably the best turnout for the yeah. BC comp. And the pressure in that Masters climb is yeah. pretty big. Like, yeah. you know, it's a big it's a tree. tree. It's a big tree. <laughs> and everyone and like, is watching. Yeah, everyone's everyone's watching it. you. The pressure is on. And, you know, we're talking about nerves and that's a lot of nerves. Yeah. So, I mean, I take my hat off to those girls. Like, just oh, getting in there and putting in all of that effort. Yeah, it was a probably, it was what, probably what, like a good 60 foot ascent up to, yeah. to even get to like the first branch on, on yeah. the side. And some of them have nev- never ascended in that sort of way before or, I don't know, just a knot. You see, so it's, it's kind of like, well, they're not as familiar to it as you guys kind yeah. of are, like, yeah. sort of day like, in, day out. I know, like, um, a couple of them, like, Julia doesn't even do, she's not an arborist, she just, she's learned how to climb oh, really? through doing some jobs and knowing some arborists, and so she's just learned how to climb and she, she loves it, but <laughs> right. she doesn't do it for a job, so she's, like, okay. she gets minimal time to practice, like, on the work site, the only time she ever practices is, like, for recreation, so mm-hmm. it's pretty impressive how... How really impressive. competent Julia is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's what I love about the comps because it kind of, you've got that support, but it also you've got all that pressure, but you're not doing a job, so you haven't got to worry about all the yeah. other shit that's going on. It's just you've got to get to all these points. It's all laid out for you, but there's still a lot of pressure. So it forces you just don't want to make a fool of yourself. Yeah, and there's that as well. But it's great because it, it brings out the best in people because suddenly people forget about trying to do what they're doing and they just climb the tree. Yeah. Because they know where they've got to get to. It's point yeah. A and point B. And it just it just kind of yeah brings the best out of people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, like so with the so one of the girls who probably did she like from what I heard I didn't see any of it but she probably had the best her, climb. Yeah. Her she movement got, around the tree was. She epic, got yeah. like the she got more. She, she, got, stations, stations, did she? she yeah. got into the masters for twenty this, to this thirty. Is, 20 to 30 points above any other girl. And this yeah. is the first time she's first ever competed. Yeah. 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 And yeah. she did move around the tree very well. Yeah. She's very natural, well. like, fair to say. She's, she, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. She, yeah. She looked like a natural. It's kind of, it's almost, there's a bit of fearlessness there, which I think is kind of like that, that ballsy confidence that yeah. just, yeah. Definitely helps for, yeah. She has balls. <laughs> but there was an infor- unfortunate incident where it, she... Given the access into the tree, I think she felt that SRT was the only, only way, so she she took on the rope wrench, and I th- I think that's when it kind of went downhill for her because it's not a tool that she was familiar with, and although she worked the tree well, there was a combination of things, and maybe her hitch maybe. wasn't tied correctly, but so basically she was she was DQ'd for grabbing hold of the wrench rather than the hitch. Yeah, yeah, so it was, it, was yeah. An, it was basically an uncontrolled descent. But her hitch wasn't uh, grabbing no, either, and so she, I think her last was 20 tied. foot was a free fall. Yeah, but I think her hitch was tied fine. I think it was just because she was working yeah. the wrench. Yeah. That, um, 
the hitch then became loose. Right. So if, she, yes. if she'd right, taken yeah. a moment just to stop and hold on like she was anyway and just tend her hitch, then it would have locked back up yeah. again and she would have But been... it's like that, <clears throat> it's like... It's like the footlock when when people say never grab a buffet above it because if you get the death grip, which means that you your body, you can't even tell your hands not to let go because you're so scared that you just hold on. Mm. And so I, I think it's probably like in that final descent where she yeah. she kind of came down pretty rapid, like that last fifteen feet. She probably had the death grip where she couldn't even let go of the go. Ab- yeah, like right. the wrench, like. To, to stop what she was doing because maybe she didn't quite understand or yeah um, which is like well on the descent she was actually self feeling she was so, holding yeah, under what well, I didn't get that yeah. she was holding under the wrench and she was holding hitch. under the hitch climber so, so she, why she was, hadn't it why hadn't it bit why didn't it bite because she was holding it up like that right so it's literally self belaying on a single line yeah so there must, there must well, she must have still been holding the top of the wrench with one hand and yeah, yeah. Well, she must have had some friction in the wrench. There, there would have been uh, some friction. It just would have been loose. Yeah. And it wasn't like she came. Oh, well, I didn't see. So yeah, yeah. difficult but to comment. Yeah, but just... DQ'd for for um, uncontrolled ascent due learning to not experience. really being familiar with a piece of kit yeah. and probably being a bit overwhelmed by the. Mm-hmm. the size of the master's tree yeah. I mean she probably went into that competition not thinking you know like all of yeah. us or at least us three not Dan <laughs> but not really expecting to to get to the masters yeah um, her first comp yeah and, and uh, I think um, it, what, was it her first time on a wrench maybe or, on the or second time second on time a on a wrench yeah yeah but she'll learn so she but, won't make that mistake again will she a, a big kind of safety concern for mm-hmm. the comps right like you've got to be familiar with the gear that you're going to use like properly familiar with it you yeah. can't yeah. just be second time use or mm-hmm. yeah What's and that's kind of so so Ryan um, when he organises it he always he always makes a point in like the the initial kind of intro to the comp the walk around on the Saturday morning to say never use a piece of gear that you're not familiar with like um, and now that like now the rope wrench is been approved in ISA comps like they're not even checking if people can use it because it's a, an approved bit of gear like the mm. like they they expect if you're going to be using a piece of gear in a competition you know to use it properly um it's a hard thing to, to yeah but you, to assess yeah, it's and hard, as well, hard to police you know? because You've if somebody wants to use like you know. if somebody wants to use a bit of gear they're going to say that they know how to use it even if they're not 100% like on it, aren't they? But that's yeah. quite a dangerous thing in its own right as well. And I think in a competition scenario, because you're kind of there's so many overwhelming factors. Yeah. I think that's why it's imperative that you know how to use your gear. Because, Definitely. You know, you're under so much pressure elsewhere that shit. I mean, that's your lifeline ultimately. And that's why like, that's why everybody says never try something new in a competition because, mm. <clears throat> like, ninety nine point cent, sorry, ninety nine percent of the time it's going to end. Like what? in disaster, like yeah. you, it, like I'm not, I'm not talking about like disaster as in injury, but even if you try something, like a little technique that you've seen somebody else do, like oh this is this is great for maybe doing a quick redirect or like transferring your line over a limb without climbing up or like any any little technique if you've not tried it before, undoubtedly you try it in a competition and it's gonna go wrong and yeah. then you're gonna kind of well it's like get in strapped my first like... at the BC comp in Comox. Like I'd always been climbing on a four wrap prusik, and then you've like introduced me to the hitch climb and all this sort of stuff. So there I am trying to work out how to tie a bloody hitch for a hitch yeah. climb system. I get into the climb, I'm there and I tie it all. I think it's all cushy. I attach in and I start trying to go up and it just doesn't grab. So it's... immediately I've tied it completely wrong, and I don't even I don't think I even got up into the tree because I didn't know. What it's like I, was I doing always tell people: you want to succeed at the comps. Stick to your three strand and your Blake's hitch. <laughs> <laughs> your closed system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to stick. You got to stick to. You, you got, learn from this stuff, don't you? you got to, that's what I think yeah, exactly. Like every comp that I've been to, like definitely, like quite a few things have gone wrong, and I, I think those things are really going to stick with me, stick in my head, and I'll never do them again. Which I hope is true. Um, hopefully, I never drop a bit of gear again. <laughs> from oh. the, like, from the, you're gonna the... take half the kit this time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Next time. Yeah, like, you, you, like when you get that feeling of like, I'm sure, like, luckily I've never dropped a handsaw in a competition, but I know enough people that have, 
And so like, Matt's got something to talk about to help. You oh out yeah, that, yeah, that's <laughs> going nice, to save you there. That yeah. Was a, yeah, that was nice little segue. There. <laughs> yeah. But I know, like, so many people have dropped handsaws, and and then you see them the next time around, and it's secured to them. And yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like you, you look, like those the things that go wrong are the things that really stand out for you. Because oh, you never forget it. Yeah, you're never going like, to forget it, and like especially if it really screws up your competition. Mm-hmm. So. Like hitting the most obvious station in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I actually did that in the, what was it, the PNW 2014 or 13 or something. Like, I was like, I was all getting in the zone and everything. I was like, yeah, station there, station there. Like, it was the first time I'd brought, like, because it was, like, quite close to home. It was in Surrey, so which is pretty close to Vancouver. Like, I got a bunch of my mates to come down. <laughs> I was all G'd up, really nervous, but, like, <laughs> like fired up with adrenaline. And I just, I saw the first bell, like, jumped out to that and, like, rang it. And then, like, went for a big swing. <laughs> yeah, because I was all, like, fully pumped up. But my swing, my swing was for, like, the third bell, if you, like, if you know what I mean. It, it was kind of the... The third one that was the obvious one to go to, so I, I skipped one, which meant I had to go back up the tree to get it, which I didn't have a panting on, so it, like it was uh, like hauling myself up, and it was just a, yeah. You've gone through all that, and <laughs> it was now you're winning. A disaster. The <laughs> um, it's probably a good moment to move on to the old tool of the week. Do you know what I think? Tool of the week. This week, tool of the week. Over to you, Matty boy. Thanks. Okay, I put a lot of thought into this. Um, there's going to be there's going to be a lot of guys out there, and why the hell have you chosen that? Or Caribbean. There's, there's going to be some, <laughs> there's, yeah, a <laughs> non-load bearing, not not for climbing. Yeah. Caribbean, I got in a happy meal. So, <laughs> um, I don't know. There's going to people. People are going to love it, or they're going to hate it. I, I don't really care. I'm, this is a tool of the week for people who want to just give it a go, I suppose. I'm going to hold it up and demonstrate it because we are being filmed. Maybe this will end up on YouTube, I don't know. So you can learn from <laughs> the video. Twang. Basically, you know what a landline is. It's not a carabiner. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a stretchy... It's a, sorry, you're working it well, George. Um, so it's... I'll keep it brief. It is a, it's a tether for your handsaw. And in this case, it's a silky Zuba, which is a great saw. I won't go into it. I don't know. I don't know which handsaw everyone uses, but the Silky is a great one. And I like this Zubat with a curved blade. Whatever. I put, I have this tether for it, which is a, looks like an aluminium wire, plastic coated, and it's a pigtail. So it basically, it's like a telephone wire. Um, and one, hand, one end is on the handle for the Silky and the other end is on a carabiner, which is just on my scabbard. And it recoils to nothing what's that 20 centimeters it's minimal but i have a full once i take my saw out i can reach what's that you see on the camera that's like six foot six foot reach whoa that's a good reach you got that it's not even you know it's not even trying to pull the saw back no so uh, Um, even for anybody with gorilla arms you'd still be able to reach and it this little pigtail just recoils and then Basically, you can't drop your hands out the tree. That's exactly it, George. You know, how many times have you climbed and you're coming down and well, you've lost your, yeah, you've like lost your hand you're, you're, you're going through a crotch or something like that, your saw flips out. And or... your groundy sends it up on the end of a rope and they don't put it in the scab and then it's on the... Mm. the the blade is rubbing your rope and don't deny it, everyone does it. Well, I so, think I can find it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, you don't drop it. And I've even, with this tether... I'm climbing and I go to grab my handsaw and it's not in its scabbard, it's hanging. But yeah. at least I've not dropped it. I've not dropped it down to the ground. Um, which it Great bit kit. Also, like when you when you're doing a, a a sketchy top, let's say, and you wanna put your you, you wanna take away the final bit of the hinge with the with the with the handsaw and then brace once the top goes off if you're rigging or whatever, you can just drop it and it's gonna hang on the bungee, not go anywhere. Exactly, George. Something like that, you know. So many guys are going to listen to this and go, oh, this is a chainsaw, we're a lad. But come on, don't yeah. deny it. The Zubat is an epic piece of kit in itself. Yeah. So if you've got a tether for it and you can drop it knowing in an, uh, an emergency situation yeah. or whatever, you can drop it and you're going to be safe. And then the second point, I suppose, whilst we were on the competition climbing, is it's a, it's a fail-safe. You know, you're not going to drop a piece of gear. And when, we're using your Zub- when you're using your hand saw to ring a bell, you've got full... 
faith that you're not going to drop it and it's just going you can put it back in its scabbard. Yeah. Um, so how much does it so cost? So Try this, it. Where'd you get it? This ah, it's a tough one because this is a an initially a rock climbing piece of equipment used for it had a tool on the end of it for scraping out crevices. Uh, so I took the tool off. It's a nut tightening tool, isn't it? Yeah. Was that what? And yeah, it had a hook yeah. on the end for scraping out. So it's actually. Um, so I've got the, the cleaning your ears out. I got the same one, and I think I think it's black diamond. Uh, oh no, it's Countryman. Who make? I don't know. Is that, is that a brand? Don't know. What logo is that? Uh, Let's see. Let's have a look. I think it's Countryman, or I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. This will be added I'm not to big the... into rock climbing, so I, but I think it is. Country. Anyway, it's for like yeah, it's for a like the lanyard. It's for a tool to tighten up nuts. I presume mm. if you're if you're bolting a root, um, yes. so you don't drop that particular tool. So when I bought mine, I just took the took the thing it was attached to off, and it makes like the perfect little lanyard. And I've strop. I've dropped. I did the same. I've had this for two down. years now, and I use my silky a lot more than I use my chainsaw. My top not handle, lot, really. which yeah, you know I do a lot of fine pruning, so I use my. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just likes the piece in quiet of his own voice. I do. Why use a chainsaw if you can get away with using a chainsaw? I don't get it. I don't know. Exactly. I don't get got, why yeah. guys want to insist on using a chainsaw. Yeah. Repetitive strain injury. Whatever, but tether. <laughs> okay, and if you, if you if you can't get, get hold the of one of these, going chainsaw or silky. <laughs> yeah, let's start another one. If you can't even get hold of one of these, be on the podcast next week. Plastic coated pigtails. You could just. Use a bit you of throw use, line. Uh, or... You can throw line. You can go to any. Um... Our throw line would get pain in the arse. So well, it's not stretchy, it's but you can um, you can get those little trailer like handbrake um, oh, yeah. tethers from from your local. What is it, Lord Co? Here or? Well, how about? Well, no one uses a landline pass. anymore, so just go down your <laughs> second hand shop and just like cut all your telephone. How about off. one of those retractable, um, like you like for a ski bar. pass on a ski pass? For a pass, yeah. so if you've got a card on a I retractable think, I actually coil. think that's. I, I think that's be- that works better. I th- I'd say this is yeah. probably the best. Yeah. yeah, but I'm sure, like, if you went onto Amazon or something, there's a billion companies out there making something similar. So yeah. even even if. They don't make that one anymore. They'll there'll be some. It's basically a stretchy it. coily cord with a couple of um, key actually, rings in the end of each, and then you can clip a carabiner onto that. And on that carabiner, it's actually it's rated or rated it says five it says five k. Yeah, five kg. Yeah, so, so it's actually Fernandez could probably climb off that. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the moral of the story is, if you've not tried one before, try a tether on your hand saw. Yeah, because yeah, definitely. I find with this, it's. 99% useful and 1% annoying when it might get caught on a branch. Yeah. yeah. Or just don't drop your hand off. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well yeah, that's that not, yeah, you can't, you can't just decide not to drop your hand <laughs> off. I, but yeah, I, I agree with you totally on that one, Matt. Like, I, I've got, I have that same tether. Um, I've probably had it on my hand saw now for, uh, I don't know, like three years or something. And it gets caught, like, I don't know, 0.1% of the time. And, even if it like the I can the last time I dropped a hands yeah yeah I just remember how annoying it gets when you've just got a call down and you're like I dropped my hands I don't know I don't know where it is but it's probably <laughs> it's probably in that bunch of brambles down there can you have a look for me and then like you're waiting and like uh, yeah because I use my hands all the time um, and it just I don't know it's just a pen in the ass when it when you drop it out of the tree yeah. or yeah. Wings. You wouldn't use a chainsaw, not many people, or you wouldn't use a chainsaw with that lanyard, so why would you, you know, try yeah. a handsaw with it? Oh, yeah, it's dangerous enough dropping a handsaw out of the tree. Exactly. It is almost as dangerous as dropping a chainsaw out of the tree, but, you know, safety. 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 safety, 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 safety. <laughs> which uh, will segue nicely into our uh, um, next topic, which is George is going to take on the topic for this week. It is... Close calls and incidents. This week and probably every other week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, um, so in this in this section, we're going to talk about any close calls that probably one of us is going to do it each week, either that we've had or that we've seen happen mm. or that we've heard about, um, and then we're just going to go in, into it a little bit. So, a learning exercise. Exactly, which is yeah. I mean, that's what this industry is all about. There's so many accidents and incidents that happen. Um, we we kind of need to talk about them a, a little more openly. Like you'll see them 
you see them on social media all the time, but you never really get the full story about what's happened because it's just a, like a headline and people will read that, maybe not even click on the link. So if we can kind of share some experiences that we have like first-hand knowledge of, then we can maybe, I don't know, people can learn a little more and hopefully take something away from it. But if not, then then more for them. Phew. Close calls and incidents. Yeah, it's uh, something we do twice a week in our yard where I work. Um, and if, if nothing else, it just keeps everyone aware and on the, on the, on the page of being, of being safe as they can at work. Um, so the, the, it's more, a bit more on the close call I'm going to bring up for this one. There's a full-on incident. Um, the one that springs to mind, I was a uh, nice summer's day. Uh, it's been a long, hot summer. It's last last year, I think it was last year. Um, <clears throat> pruning uh, a deer dar cedar in the rear yard of a, a nice a nice home in in Surrey, BC. Um, previously topped, it had been topped probably fifteen years prior. Um, left to regrow after that. It was quite common in in. Uh, in that area of BC, you see a lot of top trees, unfortunately. Um, so it's re regrown a bunch of tops, probably four or five, good sort of 20 foot tops, and um, formed that kind of familiar sort of ball shape um, of the overall crown. And uh, anyway, my job for that day, was, or for that morning at least, was to um, shape in <coughs> an all an all rounded reduction of this of this deer dar cedar. To sh shrink it down and keep it contained, I think we were probably knocking off uh, 12 feet or so of the of the height, and and then six to eight of the of the spread to keep it contained. Um, so anyway, uh, do my usual sort of due diligence, inspect the crown. I know it's been topped. I know I know about weak tops, uh, regrown tops are pretty superficial when it comes to strength. Um, so I, I check the the previous wound. It's it's pretty old, pretty healed over. Uh, like I say, 15 years ago, it was probably top the first time. And I tie in quite high up into the chunkiest top I can find. Um, and I, I begin my work, begin uh, pruning, dropping the other tops. Uh, I prune the, the backside of the tree. And I've been in a tree, what, maybe an hour? working from this one top, um, come around the front to the, uh, the house side, and I've uh, yeah probably done 75, 80% of the work at this point, working from the one top, which I was pretty confident was safe. Um, I tip-tied another sort of co-dominant, uh, a, a lateral that had turned into a co-dominant, tip-tied it for the rigging, and just as I'd come into the crown to to drop down to make the cut lower, lower down, um, so I wasn't lanyarded in. I had spent, you know, being aware of the kind of the frailties of the of the nature of the job. I, I spent most of the time lanyarded in, but for this for this instant, for this for this one instant, um, rappelling down to make my cut, I unlanyarded it, obviously, started to rappel down, and at that point, the top I was tied into sheared off at its union, and I fell. Well, two stories. I was at the height. Jesus. I was at the roof roof height of a two story home. Shit. Were you on the um, sort of outside of the tree or the inside of the tree? Do you want me to? Were you pulling inside. against? So, so I was. So you were actually pulling into the strongest yeah, part. Yeah, which is which is kind of weird. So I wasn't in 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 my opinion. I wasn't putting the most amount of pull on that particular limb that I had been. And I'd already worked the tips of the crown from mm. that limb on the other side from that top. Should I say? And at the point it gave, I just swung into the to the centre stem, and yeah, it gave out, and I fell, yeah, two stories to the ground, missed every branch on the way, <laughs> uh, and and hit hit a small patch of patch of grass, and the, and the top came down afterwards and landed next to me, um, and smashed a Japanese maple. Which, it's really unfortunate. <laughs> That's where you hit the ugly stick. Yeah. Oh. And that's why I look like this. <laughs> no, um, yeah, and I had time to think as I was falling. I had time to think, grab a branch, grab a branch. C 
couldn't grab any branches. That's okay, crazy. Bend your like... knees. So I bent my knees and I, I landed feet first. I was luckily, I, you know, I was kind of in an upright position when it when it gave out, and I and I fell in an upright position and I landed, thinking bend your knees, and I bent my knees and I landed, and I the you know really fortunate, really really fortunate that I didn't break anything. And my girlfriend's a nurse, so that, that really helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her outfit on. <laughs> we, Did the um, top come down after or before you? Top came down after. So I kind of basically, yeah, the top next was above me the whole time. It landed next to me. Um, That's so bizarre that you say that when you're falling, it was kind of like you had time to think about or uh, grab a branch or bend your knees. It's a very like, small amount of time. It's because, like, I guess it wouldn't have just dropped, would it? It, it must have pulled out. It, well, you know, I can't. I remember my my sort of the processes that went through my brain because you don't you don't instantly know what's going on. No. Mm. I just knew I was falling. I was like, and you don't you don't know what's happening. You don't know the top's given out. You don't know. Uh, mm. And you, you just uh, your instincts are like fucking falling. Grab something. Nothing to grab. Bend your knees. And that's it. That's yeah. the two thoughts that went through my mind. So what actually happened? Injuries wise, what actually? Injuries wise, I sprained my left ankle really badly <laughs> I did manage to think that uh, I had a previous injury in my right ankle from, from playing football and to land mostly on my left ankle <laughs> <laughs> so three, sounds like you had all the time in the world to think about what, what's that mean? it's like a cartoon you know <laughs> where you just you stop just before and then you're like yeah. oh, oh left oh, ankle <laughs> so my left ankle took most of it and yeah sprained it very badly and uh, took a few weeks off Right. It's it's so crazy how you all you did was sprain your ankle because like falling from what like would you say thirty foot? Yeah, probably a bit less than thirty so foot. Twenty five foot. Less, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. Which that's like that's you, that's right? like a that is a a proper fall like that's yeah, yeah that's like breaking your limbs kind of a fall. Mm-hmm. Well, he's uh, a solid boy, isn't he, old Georgie? His athletic, <laughs> athletic build. But did so, it cut so, you off tree work, George? And did you, when that, those couple of weeks you had off, did you have any realisation? Oh, actually, do you know what, this isn't for me? Or you know what, you... like, yeah. Um, especially coming back into work afterwards, it really, really knocked my confidence. Did like, you just do hedges? Well, no. <laughs> actually, the, the <laughs> that, that, would, that would be the, like, the nail in the coffin. You'd <laughs> that be like, would knock right, confidence. Yeah. <laughs> The, the, like, this is not for me. The week I came back, I did probably the scariest tree I've ever done, which is a massive, it was a removal of a massive dead big leaf maple. That was kind of the bosses to do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Won't name any names, Oliver Darby. <laughs> no. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it did knock my confidence. And I, I for a long, for a, a good year, I'd say afterwards, I was landing all the time and you know taking two ropes up or or you know using the tail of my line or taking two lanyards or or and i bought an extra long lanyard i bought one of those fucking seven meter long sea lanyards um it takes yeah it took me yeah. Sorry, but, 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 but maybe it takes something like that like to really force you to to kind of look at I mean, like none of that was your fault because, like you'd you'd said, you'd inspected the tree, you'd, worked, you'd worked around the tree, you'd like. Um, I mean, on reflection, you know, I would have taken a second line up, yeah, tied into another top, yeah, and yeah, uh, worked worked the tops down in in sections so that I was always secured, I suppose. And, or, but do you still or do, or do even that? Taken do you a, still do that now? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is no, but, no, this is a really interesting thing because, like. No, but I bet if if he came across a tree that was similar, if I, like... if I came across, yeah, I would. I would probably take a second line up, and at least you know a, a more a less a less static line, and at least tie it as a backup somewhere lower down near the union. Yeah, near where all those those gnarly tops are coming out of the of the topping wound. Yeah, because there'd be a lot of people that are going, oh, you know, don't be such a pussy. I just get get it laid down and all that sort of stuff. But actually, at the end of the day, it's your life in your hands. So you have that decision to make at like that time. That. I was yeah. like that at the time. And, and it's, it's like that across the board. But I think, I, I, think, like, I think that's like that's probably where quite a few accidents happen because how many times have you done a job and like 
you feel kind of uncomfortable and you're like, oh, I don't really want to do this. And then, and then, but then a lot of people will mm-hmm. carry on because they feel the pressure of maybe their bosses or the guys that they're working with, or you got to get this done, or like, are you going to look like a pussy if you don't do it, or whatever. Um, That's and, and like, and like yeah. yeah, maybe like eighty percent of the time, you you could do those jobs and. Uh, you know, I mean, come out of it fine. You get but away like, with it so many times, but there's, it only takes one time when you don't, and yeah. you pay the price. So it's the it's that fine line of 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 really using your expertise, experience, judgment of like how trees work, and and I don't know, like trusting your instincts, like because yeah, like George, George got pretty lucky there. But um, yeah, that yeah, could right, that right, could have yeah. been like if you like so you landed on your feet and you bent your knees, but if you'd have landed on your back, like, oh, like, yeah, how, much, like how much how much worse like you might not fun. be doing tree work anymore. Yeah. And yeah. that's why like this this is definitely a topic <laughs> <laughs> touching my hand there, Georgie. <laughs> this is definitely a topic for uh, like another podcast and stuff, but um since I saw um I actually saw two talks about similar topics at uh, one of the PNW um, conferences like two years ago and um, Kevin Bingham did one of them and Ryan Seneschal did another and they were pretty much oh no hang on I I need to correct myself there Kevin so Kevin Bingham was doing a talk but it was about uh, the rope wrench but I'd spoken to him prior to it um, about Ryan's topic which was like using basically two lines or redundancies and so backing up you like your bridge with the second bridge using two ropes in the tree um and kevin uh, then started telling me how he'd been climbing like that for the the past year because he he had so many occasions where he had used like a saw maybe with, without landing on and he just he really wanted to get out of the habit of it um and so he thought, and because he'd done, I think he'd done a, a Sprat or a Rata course, um, which you always have to have two lines. You have to have your main line. And That's the rope line. access. Yeah, the, yeah, the rope, rope access. access courses. Yeah. And because he'd done that course, he'd then gone back to tree work and been like, well, it's silly, why are we just using one rope? Um, yeah, why? When you're you? using tools yeah. that yeah, cut your it's, rope. You know, and be, well, but yeah. I mean, being the amazing climber that, that Kevin is, I think it then becomes a bit more of, a, it becomes a bit of a challenge to him and to, to really push himself and to drive himself that he can be safer. Um, it's always harder to be safer than it is to be unsafe. Yeah. In, in terms of time and efficiency and all the rest of it. So if you're, if you're just looking at getting the job done, making money or being a good employee, it never makes sense. A good employee but in terms of production. In terms of production. Because like, you know, yeah, a dead you're employee right. is not a good employee. I think it employee. takes the climate. But in terms of your career, you know. Oh, and just your own... Like professionalism can, yeah. and all the rest of it, yeah, it's just not, it's nowhere near worth it, yeah, most of the time. <laughs> all the yeah. time. But we've we all got like, corners, and it's just like, yeah, and especially, especially for those like those guys like green in the industry or like just getting into it, learning to climb. If they, it, I think it all comes down to the the role model and the boss. Um, if they, mm. if those guys have a good like have a good boss, good role role model who's willing to teach them and teach them the right way. Like telling them, they must be tied in twice. Um, and it's 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 learning from the experiences. So it's, 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 it's instead of being sort of over cautious and unnecessarily over cautious. Yeah. It's more about actually being really knowledgeable. Yeah. So learning from previous experiences and yeah. going, okay, this tree you haven't got to be tied in twice. Yeah. Just get it down. And you can get it down quickly. Yeah. But actually, in this tree, because of previous experience and incidents. Tie in twice because you're going to reduce. Tie, you mean risk. take two main lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not talking than, about. Yeah, you're just talking about in general being tied in twice the whole time. Not yeah. Yeah, having, yeah, having yeah, a yeah, back main line yeah. rather than yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you just you just yeah. I think you should become more knowledgeable, which makes you safer. Yeah. And how many? I don't know. Maybe George knows more than me. How many fatalities would you get in a rope access job in comparison? Oh, very to few. Our, I think exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you look at well, some of you I look at social yeah. media for our work, mm. and you see the fatality. It's a rate. fraction of, yeah. of the amount in in rope they're access. Doing high, they're doing highly dangerous. Diff- work. Sad to say, the difference is the money is in rope access, and um, and it's not in ARB. and it comes down to, I feel the the money that's there in 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 how much they can invest in in safety. Yeah, and are prepared to take the time mm. and and equipment to uh, do a safer job. It's as if the industry needs to. 
maybe, start maybe, respecting... maybe it comes down to tickets. Maybe it comes down yeah. to you know, I think the level there's, of qualifications as well. There's quite, I think there's quite a lot of factors involved, but a big one in real Paxis is that pretty much everything's for for like in the commercial sector. Yeah. So and commercial sector, they're gonna pay. Yeah, they're yeah. gonna pay the money. Yeah. There you Whereas go. Whereas yeah. within yeah. the within the arb, obviously there's like. Yeah. Like it's more some some of, some, of, some of the crappiest work in our industry is the like the, um, uh, like pruning for electric wire like electricity yeah. like hydro we call it hydro because it's BC hydro, but um, yeah power line power lines, yeah power yeah. line clearance that like that's probably some of the best paid work if you just you know like your everyday climber or bucket operator but that's the worst work but it's because. They're paying standard. because they're paying the money because they they have to keep these lines clear whatever. Whereas if you're working in residential areas, like Joe Bloggs or Mrs right. Smith doesn't want to pay like top dollar for somebody even if they are a certified arborist have done and all these got, courses. You've always like, do as you like. He's will run around and just say, well, I can do that. Cause exactly. Got the balls and I just get up there and yeah, exactly. And brush it down on a trailer. <laughs> yeah, and gone. And I mean, you could you could talk about this topic for yeah. for weeks and end, but. I think it does come down to there's so many people that can just go out there with a truck and start hacking at trees and some people don't know any different like some that is a problem though that I think that is a problem uh, and you could pull anyone off the street we could go out out the door now grab anyone anybody give them a chainsaw and a rope and harness and get them to a tree and they're an arborist they're just as qualified pretty much as me and you hmm. You know, give or take maybe ISA qualification, but that doesn't really mean a whole lot. Whereas you can't do that in in other industries. That's what you're saying, yeah. So actually, yeah, basically, yeah. You know, and yeah. and there's a lot, there's a hell of a lot of education uh, involved in our work, and it's, which it's, isn't recognised. Pe- people by, would argue that there's a lot of barriers there, and you know, oh, you're preventing this, oh, we've got to pay this money, we've got to do that. But at the end of the day, would argue at, the end, that, yeah, but... at the end of the day, it comes down to your safety and your well-being, and and also the skills and the knowledge. Yeah, of doing a good, safe job. Well, yeah, I mean, a, a unprofessional pruner, someone who goes and tops a tree, is making a dangerous situation down the line for the client and the future arborist. You know, mm. you go and top a deer dar cedar. <laughs> fifteen years, <laughs> fifteen years later, you might dick. <laughs> some uh, innocent. Yeah, have you found the guy climbing up. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, thanks. Yeah, so much, well, uh, yeah. Well, we, yeah, I think you probably learned quite a bit. Just yeah, that was that. yeah, that was a for for the first incident mm. on the that section. That I was, got plenty more. That was, <laughs> that was a pretty good one. Yeah, watch this space. <laughs> Honestly, he is safe. <laughs> <laughs> Do a good job most of the time. Um, but yeah, yeah. Cheers for that, Georgie. That was a good one, mate. Um, so just just to wrap up, we'll just um, just go through a couple of upcoming industry events um this past weekend was the european climbing championships in prague um i've never been to an etcc but i've heard that they're pretty much the best ones to go to sounds like a lot of fun um so for the women joe hedger from the uk she won representing the uk nice one joe and for the men i'm actually i'm gonna butcher his name here but peter veg Gote from Belgium. Um, so coming up on the 22nd of July, um, it's the Austrian TCC, which is in Lackenburg, Austria. I think that's how you pronounce it. That would be pleasant. Um, coming up in mid-August is the ISA annual conference, which is in Fort Worth, Texas. And Yeehaw! I looked on a, on the website and pre-registration is until the 22nd of July. Otherwise, you have to wait and register on the day. So get your registrations in. Um, as a bit a bit of a weird one because so the for the, this year the ISA actually split up the tree climbing comp and the conference. So the tree climbing comp was in April, which was in Texas, and then the the conference is in August, which. I'm not sure why they did that. It seems a bit strange because surely they're going to miss out on quite a lot of of people that would have mm. that would have gone. Like a lot of the climbers, a lot of the people travelling with the climbers. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what the process was behind that. And then um, end of August, it, it, we've got a Seattle 
tree climbing comp this year, which is the 27th. Uh, I think there's only a few spots available. Uh, have you, are you in that, mate? You, you no, registered? No, I'm not registered for that, mate. No, you get your registration in. <laughs> get on it. Honestly, I think, I think there's only like maybe three three spots left. Awesome. Oh, maybe come on, George. I'll date if you do well, I can't oh, I'll travel. I'm not allowed to travel at the moment because of my visa, but... I Isn't would. And it? other reasons. Because <laughs> <Yeah, sure. laughs> you're a criminal. <laughs> FBI, most of them. I've got Matty getting it and I'll come and photograph it. 27th of August? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, I need to check. <laughs> everyone, everyone listens to this Maybe podcast. Maybe I'll think about it. Yeah. Just like... um, I, spoke to, I spoke to Stu earlier. He said that he, he could have a... Well, he didn't say you could have a seat, but he said there's a seat in his car if you oh. want to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, but, that helps, yeah. but if he, if he hears this year, he's probably not going to have a seat. So. <laughs> All right. um, so, yeah, so um, I think we should wrap her up. Yeah, um, well, cheers that, Yeah, but Good. thank... Always wrap up. Thank you for listening. <laughs> thank you for listening. Um, Especially if you've gone this far, an hour and a half later. Yeah, Jesus. If you're still, if you're still with us, <laughs> five people. Yeah, there. There, must, yeah. there must be something wrong. <laughs> I hope you've had as many beers as we have. Sleep well. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, cheers for uh, checking out this first ever podcast. Probably the only podcast trees. about yeah, this, trees in our world. This. Uh, I don't know. Dan, can yeah, I, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't looked into it. There may, there may be, there may be hundreds. And to to but there may be, <laughs> well, well, people obviously <laughs> love talking about trees. Can so any sure of the listeners contact you for, regarding questions for next time? Definitely. Uh, yeah, if you want to, if you want us to answer some of your questions, um, email me at mail at climbingarborist.com. That's M-A-I-L at climbingarborist.com. Um, yeah, send us some questions and hopefully the next podcast will, we'll read a few of those out and, try our very best to answer them um, any fan mail for Matt Fernandez um, right. can not come to <laughs> stay me back, stay back stay back stay <laughs> back he's taken uh, I'll, take, I'll take pictures <laughs> right, right. Oh, oh. <laughs> dick pics <laughs> what's your Instagram Snapchat um, but thanks very much for checking us out and hopefully there'll be many more podcasts to come joined by these lovely gentlemen um, hopefully we'll get some other guys to join in as well um, and give us their thoughts on various topics in the ARB world. So thanks very much and we'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.